friends, I am here today to do a book tag haul. I was tagged by Livomer. Um, I'll link his channel in his video down below. This is the A to Z hot or not tag. So basically in this tag, I am given a prompt based on each letter and I have to say kind of a yay or nay to it. So some of these I was really confused about and some of them I have very strong opinions about. Let's get started. Okay, my goal is to maybe put up a book in each category for this. Um, don't hold me to that. And if it starts to drop off towards the end of the video, just pretend like I was successful in this goal. But let's get started. The first prompt is audiobook, which obviously thumbs up for audiobooks. I think people who say audiobooks are not real reading are missing the point of reading which is to enjoy a story in my mind and maybe learn something and you can do both of those things with audiobooks so i know it may be using your ears instead of your eyes but it's still using one of your senses to enjoy a story there are so many people that audiobooks work better for or they're not able to maybe read a book in physical form and I think saying that they're not reading because they can't physically um, complete the act or may choose not to, it seems silly in my mind. Okay, B. B is for Bill de Roman. I've never heard of this, but apparently it is someone's formative years or um, spiritual education. This is not in my wheelhouse. I think like coming of age books, I typically don't enjoy as much if that's a main aspect. Same thing with spiritual journey. It just is not something I particularly want to read about because I am more of a plot reader than a character reader. I think if those are one of several components to a book, it doesn't necessarily dissuade me. C is children's books. Yes, definitely. I think these are amazing. There are so many kids books out there. I teach elementary school and so I read kids books all the time um, and I have really enjoyed uh, picking them up for some of my friends children's over the last few years. There's so many good ones that have been coming out. D is digital. Another thumbs up. I personally don't read as much digital because I myself prefer a physical book, but I do have my Kindle and I really enjoy it for books that I don't own. It's a great way to figure out if you like a book before you buy it, which is a habit I need to get into, to be honest. E is experimental. I don't know what that means. I don't know what an experimental book is. But I'm gonna say no. As a reader, I like a comfort read. I'm totally fine if my romance follows the same happy ending every style every single time. If my fantasy book has all the characters alive at the end, like I don't really need the twist. I enjoy a twist, but I don't need it to enjoy a book, if that makes sense. I doubt that's what they mean by experimental. F is for fantasy. Thumbs up, obviously. I am majority a fantasy reader. I like sci-fi. I'll read historical fiction and classic classics and literary fiction. I'll, I'm trying to get more nonfiction in, but I would say a good 90% of my reading is fantasy. And I have to not make myself step out of fantasy, but remind myself that I do enjoy books outside of fantasy. G is graphic novel. I love graphic novels. I have a lot of good ones on my shelf. It's something I've come into pretty recently, like really since I started booktube, I didn't really pick up graphic novels because I didn't really know what to expect with them. And so I kind of stayed in my comfort area as a reader, but booktube has really helped me step out of that comfort zone and feel safe stepping out of that comfort zone as a reader. And graphic novels are one of the joys that I have discovered. H is for horror, mostly a no for me. I have liked a few Grady Hendrix things, but that's really the only horror that I read. I cannot do scary movies. I am someone that is heavily influenced. Like I will have nightmares if I watch scary movies for days afterward. And there are times I can't even like play um, scary video games. If a video game has really intense music in the background, I will have dreams based off of that as well. So no horror for me, thanks. I have, like I said, read a few Grady Hendrix and I think the reason those work for me is because the way he writes, it's a lot of like everyday life struggles and then a very terrifying event and then everyday life struggles and terrifying event. So it's a little bit easier to manage. 
I is for inspirational. I don't know why, I, it just doesn't click with me. As a reader, I think again, inspirational stories tend to be more character focused and character journey, and I am a plot reader. I want there to be something happening. I really struggle with books where we're just following someone's life and everyday activities. I don't get engaged. I don't necessarily connect with the character as much. So yeah, I, uh, I could take it or leave it really. J is journalism. I don't know that I've ever specifically read a book based on journalism, but I do like the serial podcast and that's a lot of investigative journalism and I've really liked that. I just have never picked up a book in that style. If you have any books that kind of follow the investigative journalism kind of uh, genre, I guess, let me know because I'd be very interested to see how that reads as a book versus a podcast. K is for kitsch, which is like sentimental value and appeal. I'm thinking like nostalgic and if you've seen me reading you know that I love a good nostalgia read. I have a ton of kids books that I go back to. I really love to reread things like The Phantom Toll Booth, Little House on the Prairie because those are very nostalgic books for me personally. So I'm 100% about rereading and going back to what you loved. Now there is a danger to that because sometimes you reread something and it's just not, it doesn't hold up anymore. But I think those solid reads, finding out that they've stayed solid into your adulthood and learning something new, taking something new from the story makes it even better in my mind. L is for library. Thumbs up for libraries. I think they are such a valuable part of our society. I think they should be funded, praised, used, loved, and supported. And like there are so many services they provide outside of just books that are so important to a community. And uh, yeah, libraries get all the love. M is for mystery. I don't like horror, but I do love mystery. I think it's not a genre I read a lot, but every time I do, I really get invested in the story. Yeah, I like mysteries. N is for nonfiction. And I'll give it a thumbs up. This is one I want to like more than I do, I think. There are times I find some really good nonfiction books. And then there are times where I it's kind of a slog to get through. And again, that just comes from, for me, reading is more about a release and a break and I want to have fun. And so every time I read a nonfiction where I'm learning something I'm enjoying learning that, but it takes me longer to get through because I think my brain has to work a little bit harder sometimes. And so it's not that I don't enjoy them and it's just, I struggle a little bit more to get through them. And sometimes that can feel a bit taxing. O is for omnibus. And I'm gonna say, no, I don't like omnibuses. I think it messes with my sense of accomplishment and achievement and um, it kind of breaks the rules that I have set for myself and the routines that I've set for myself. For example, I'm reading Arcanum Unbounded, which is a set of like short stories. So similar, similar um, feel as a bunch of books in one set. I plan on reading four short stories. So out of this, but not reading all the way through. On Goodreads, do I put it that it's started? And then what if I don't read some of those other ones until three or four years later? Is it just gonna be sitting on my still reading shelf and Goodreads and Storygraph? And so I don't mind <laughs> the concept, but it really messes with my my how my brain works as far as accomplishing and um, checking things off of a list for some reason. P is poetry. I'm gonna give poetry a thumbs down, unfortunately. Now I will say there are poems that have really resonated with me, but it's usually like if I read a collection of poetry, I find one or two I like. So I feel like it doesn't have a very big success rate for me. Now that's not to say it has a zero percent success rate. And the ones I really like, I usually go back and reread, but overall poetry is not for me. Q is for quests. Love a good quest. I love a checklist, a task list for myself and for my characters. I think it's as simple as that. R is for romance, and I do love romance. I love the new kind of wave of fantasy romance, romanticy. It just checks all the boxes for me. I am not one of those people that thinks it's something that's like a vice or a guilty pleasure. I just love it. S is for science fiction and 
I read a lot of science fiction. I do think, again, there are more like older science fiction that don't quite resonate with me as much. So it's not something I read as much as fantasy, but one of my all time favorite authors is Becky Chambers and she is just the queen of sci-fi in my mind. All right, almost done. T is for translated works. Thumbs up for sure. I think this is something I wish I was more aware of. I wish was more common maybe in the booktube space. I'm not very good at going out of my way to pick up translated works. Obviously there is importance and value in sharing stories and branching out and reading stories that are not just from your own frame of mind, frame of reference. So you is for Uberman. This is like a character that can do no wrong, like a lot of plot armor. I would say for me, this works about 50% of the time. It's not something that I will immediately dock. It's all about how the author has written it. Um, I think I, you usually notice when some, some, when a character like automatically picks something up with very little effort or they can do it as well as someone who's been training for years. That's a very glaring thing. But if the character is well written outside of those moments, it's not a hang up for me. However, if there are those facts and I'm not gelling with the main character, the character that is having those moments, it's a it's a deal breaker. Okay, the next one is Victorian and I'm gonna give it a thumbs down. There are Victorian books that I like, but overall I've really struggled with classics and vibing with classics. And again, I think a huge thing is a lot of writing in that era is character focus and introspective and not plot. W is for Western, and I'll be honest, I have no idea. I don't think I've ever read a Western in my life. So to be determined how I feel about Westerns. I don't know that I'll ever pick up a Western. It's not something I'm looking for per se. X is for X-rated. I like a little smut in my books. I enjoy Crescent City. I like the Akatar series. As long as there is buildup, I can't just jump straight into it the same way I can't just jump straight into Insta Love. There has to be some level of development for me, but yeah, I enjoy it. Why is YA? I have a lot of YA books on my shelf. I enjoy them just as much as my adult fantasy. So the last one is Zeitgeist, which is spirit or mood of the times. I don't know what this is either. I don't know what spirit or mood of the times. I don't know how to relate this to any of my reading. So, oh, sorry. The last one's just kind of a ambiguous thumbs down. Um, anyway, I'm not gonna tag anybody, but I would love if you've watched this video and haven't done this tag to see how you feel about some of these things. If you are a romance reader, if um, you read some of those more character-based books or Victorian era stuff, let me know and I will see you all later. Bye friends. <laughs>